Dorota Palicka International, new artist and educator and here and we are going to do those beautiful Christmassy sets so I have just carried out removal of the news and uh, now we are going to prep those new beds and apply the tips on them to do this uh, fantastic set so I'm just pushing back the cuticles and then we are going to scratch the surface of the new plate the previous set have been on for eight mm -hmm. yeah eight weeks okay. um we had one lost nail which just happened was it when was it um last sunday yeah last sunday and the rest of them have been on but it's a time for a new one so i'm just scratching the surface of the natural nail plate like making sure there is no shiny places and then we can apply the tips on them you can see how I'm constantly protecting my clients' new beds. I'm going to have a little bit, actually quite a lot of cuticle work on this uh, set as well, because the cuticles aren't the nicest, just because my lady works as a florist, so um, they get constantly uh, caught on the flowers, sharp bits and pieces, roses, how you call the sharp bit? And the holly at the moment. Uh, yeah, Christmas. oh, holly for Christmas. See, that's even worse. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Are you busy with the um, orders, flowers and... Yes, it's very busy, which is good. And I'm skiving the now for a little bit. Awesome. I have seen the decorations you have put up. They look absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. It's lovely for the kids to see all the fairy lights. Yeah, the kids are always excited when the Christmas time is coming, like for the decorations, Santa and... I think I could work in a florist shop as well. <laughs> <laughs> I love flowers, like. Mm -hmm. And you've got guys like amazing spot, like, and always so beautiful flowers. Oh, thank you so much. So I'm just removing the dust and then dehydrate the new plate with the blue scrap, like making sure it's nice and squeaky clean. Perfect. And then dehydrate a gate with an extra nail dehydrator. And then we can apply the tips. You have to wait for the nail dehydrator to dry really properly, otherwise the tips are going to crack. Uh, the dehydrator is so strong that it kind of melt the tips. So you really don't want that. So I'm just waiting for the first nail to be dry. And then measure the tips, cut the corners. I always cut the corners, doesn't matter if I'm working with the full pocket or if I'm working with the half a pocket, I'm always cutting the corners. Quickly slap the glue on and then apply those tips. So slide at the angle, click, and then apply it in. Okay, this way we don't get air bubble and the tip is secure really well. And then hold and count till ages. <laughs> I'm also working to find the best coffin tips and I know eventually I will find them. I have tried so many different ones and some of them are better, some of them are worse. So I'm really on my uh, hint for a best coffin tips because uh, um, this really popular shape at the moment and working on the tips is actually pr quite quick and comfy so I'll apply the next one And what I find it, I had some ones which are really good and the glue takes really well. Uh, on this one, the glue doesn't take as well, so I have to hold it a little bit longer. I prefer the, uh, for shorter nails, I definitely prefer the Salon Perfection Tips from the Nail Perfect because the glue takes like, you know, a couple seconds and, and it is bonded with the nail, which is fantastic.
again slap the glue on put it in because this is so time consuming like I think it depends on the material of the tips they have been done I like the shape of them but I don't like to put them on it just takes ages And I'm picking up pretty large sizes for um, for this lady because the nail beds are pretty large size as well. But I always love doing canals on her because they always look so nice and pretty once they finish. I remember when I got you a first time, like a couple of the first time, it was I was kind of almost scared to do your nails mm -hmm. a little bit honestly because of the of the size of your nails uh -huh. like I kind of felt like oh my goodness is it going to look pretty and everything but I do really like to use you for the pictures because in general everything your hands and the size of the nails are very balanced so they look really beautiful on the pictures <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> that's why I have used you so many times for the um, for the pictures or like for modeling for the fab sets as well and it just guys show you like that sometimes our judgment is can be wrong um, so even a bigger size at nails can look absolutely fantastic and this is a great example of it it takes us a little bit longer to do those kind of nails because like mm, put it this way so the middle finger would be a size of my thumb and then almost the pinky would be a size of my ring finger which means I have to put more product on which is more time consuming I have to do longer nails again which is more time consuming so they look nice and balanced and uh, I have to file more like much more it takes us much longer to file the thumbnail compared to the pinky nail and uh, that's the reason why those kind of sets takes longer time so long for it to bond and this one even doesn't want to bond okay so really time consuming guys And it's definitely not fault of the glue, as I say, the other tips like bond within like, I don't know, three seconds and this is on. I don't have to even count it in my mind. It's a due to the plastic. Some plastic, like the best one is ABS plastic. Uh, first of all, it's really nice to blend and it bonds absolutely super fast. But then applying canals in the right shape, like those coffin shapes, like is so super quick um, to do like the gel application. It's much easier than sculpting on the forms. Sculpting on the forms is pretty um, advanced, like it's require lots of skills and uh, you really need to know what you're doing. So sets on tips are much easier. This is the only part which I don't like applying the tips on. But I promise I will find the best ones. Like I will buy probably another like 10 different uh, sets of the tips before I find my perfect ones. 
Okay, once they bond it, we should wait a couple seconds for uh, for before we cutting. So I'm always removing any excess of the glue with the dry wipe, nothing on it. And now we are going to trim them. So we are going for a pretty decent size of the coffin shape. And even I have cut it like half of the tip, they are still only 100% of the nail bed extensions, which is really fantastic. And the best tip I can give you guys for cutting the tips, like always try to kind of do three lengths. So you would go either short, either medium or either long. And then depending what the length clients choose, uh, you would just trim them same length and then just adjust the shape a little bit with the filing. Um, so that's that's definitely the easiest way. And now we are going to shape them into the coffin shape. So nice V shape one side of the tip other side of the tip and then quickly shape them and and the reason why i love those tips even if they annoy me on the first part is they are really nice and straight like they don't come down and that's what i love in a coffin shape okay then blend that different so i'm just scratching quickly the surface of the entire tip and then blend the difference okay next one and so you can see it we have changed it into the coffin shape now one side other side make sure you support your file so it's not too wobbly and you've got really the straight shape that you are not making it rounded we don't want those kind of round sides you wanted it nice and straight not straight but v shape ish <laughs> Okay, blend that difference. And I love Christmas time of the year for the nails. There is so many different fantastic ideas for those sets. You can see the difference already in those filed nails. And what is awesome, that we are mainly doing our shaping the now, and then later on we are just applying a gel for a structure, and we don't have to bother as much about the shape like we would do with the sculpting forms. Blend that difference. And the fact they are clear tips as well is uh, great because if we want to go for some glitters or other encapsulations, um, this will just work fantastic. Okay, I'm just going to do this one as well and then the rest on my own, just so you know. And then we can move on into the next step, which is a gel application. So oh, just nice v-shape file that free edge and then scratch the entire surface of the tip and then we are going to uh, blend the difference and uh, move in into the other hand okay so that's how we prepare the tips i'm going to do it on the other hand and come back to you okay so that's the nails filed and the next step is to clean any dust on them. Dehydrate again, but very important, do not touch the tip. Like you really don't want to touch the tip. Okay, so I'm just dehydrating it again. Just in case if we have touched it during the filing. Extra dehydrator again more around the cuticle area because that's where the most of the lifting is starting So making sure everything is nicely dehydrated And then universal air bond and universal air bond is our base gel we don't need the base gel 
when we're using the universal air bond it works like a double-sided tape which makes the gel to attach to the needle and we do not apply it on the tips again because otherwise the tips would crack like kind of almost melt it and then the gel application so I'm going to use the fiber gel and soft pink. It looks really beautiful. And we're starting off with the nice and thin layer. Press it really, really hard through the entire needle. And then cap the free edge, like all those joining place. Like this is really important. We've got the gel in there. Okay. And um, today is a Monday, <laughs> so the salon is a bit colder than it is on the afternoon and the gel is a little bit thicker. Uh, if your product is too thick, because you're working in a cold place, I even had the question about it. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm putting it near the heater for a couple minutes, depending how watery I wanted it, and then I get the better consistency. And then if it's too warm where you're working with your product, you could always have like a um, cold water tap or even a little bit of the ice to change the consistency of the gel. And this is fantastic, like that we can kind of adjust the consistency of the product depending on the, um, okay, this is a hard word for me, enviro. Environment. Thank you. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> environment. Environment. Depending on our environment. Was it good? Yes, very good. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Um, yeah, so this is inside. So this is fantastic um, way to play with the consistency of your product. Okay, nice and thin layer again. Nice and thin layer. Cap those free edge. And I learned like, I mean, obviously when I was beginner student, my capping free edge, I show you guys how I was capping my free edge. It was like, have the free edge I'm, I'm not doing something like this now because i'm just look what i'm doing with my brush it splits it goes on the sides and that's how i'm capping my free edge so quite often guys when you're watching some videos like and this is a quicker speed you you might not pick up the things which are done or they almost seems to be invisible just because when we're working faster and um, when it becomes the routine, we do things slightly different, but we still do those things. Change. So our first layer is cure. And what is fantastic about it? Sorry, guys. Oh, this is bad. Okay, that's better. What is fantastic about it? Because we have applied so nice and thin layer, the product cures better. That's the first thing. Doesn't give a heat spike to the client. That's another bonus of it. We've got more control, so that's another bonus. And now I'm applying another layer. And this layer is going to help me distribute product evenly. It will make the product to slide better. Um, finger goes down the way, and now we are building up the apex. And what uh, I love about those needles as well, that she, the, they always come back really absolutely fantastic condition to me. Because uh, the lady takes care of her needles, they last her absolutely brilliant as well. And I don't have to build up a Kilimanjaro needle um, <laughs> for them to don't break. But this is really giving a much nicer results, like, you know. So I have built up Apex, not overly too long, because she's got change. She's got really beautiful long needle beds, which you can see the extension is even not 100%. It's less than 100%, and this is a fantastic proportion. And the needles look really long, like, because they look probably long than my needles or just about the same uh, length and there is not even a hundred percent of the needle bed extension so absolutely fantastic and I think that's why they last also so well as well because those needles don't feel even long for you isn't it no no because they are not like they look very long yeah, they were but super they are long not they long in, but they were manageable <laughs> uh -huh. so that's good okay and I'm building the structure, touch up on the sides, touch up on the sides. 
perfect change so again nice and thin layer and with the tips what else i like like okay we've got lots of preparation on applying those tips on and then we have to blend them but in general you can see the shape is much better already so we are not going to have much filing it will be like two touches of the file really and then it was done uh, which is brilliant and that gives us uh, plenty of time for a nice and beautiful christmasy decorations Um, I will use this lady next year for a Christmas set, but we will book um, extra time and we could maybe do a Grinch. Uh, is it Grinch? Yes. Yeah, Grinch news. <laughs> I love that. Change. You had the Mickey Mouse last yeah, year, isn't it? Yeah, Mickey Mouse ones. Yeah. Yeah, so last year we was painting uh, Mickey Mouse on those news. For good at Disneyland Paris. Yeah. It was amazing. I bet the share is so different. <laughs> yeah. Again, build up my structure. Going back to work today? Yes. Mm. <laughs> I'll be wearing gloves to keep my nails nice. <laughs> but... It, you're always taking a good care of your nails. Perfect change. Okay, and then another one. And with those two layers, I've got perfect amount around the cuticle area and I've got perfect amount at the free edge. Um, I don't want any more product on those nails. And this is my structure, like a huge bulb of the product. Which is going to hold everything in place. And when you're distributing the gel, make sure you kind of have even pressure. So this way you are not making holes and you've got less filing to do. Change. Okay, some nice and thin layer scoop of the product and try to pick it up more into the one side of the brush um, let it loosen from the brush kind of couple shakes and then one side other side one side other side but look what I'm doing I'm not only working with my brush I'm also working with the client finger turning it one side other side that's another tip guys for you I don't think so I have mentioned it before in the tutorials so a wee bonus for those ones who are watching this one. Change. I can even show you that to the extreme as well. So nice and thin layer. Nice and thin layer. Brush it really well. And I'm going to pick that one. Okay, so I have carried on the conversation the gel is still on this new <laughs> and now we are going to build up the structure and look guys because i have applied nice and thin layer it didn't flood the cuticles or anything and it was like really three minutes or something on the phone uh the scope and look i'm 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 going to take it to the extreme i'm not moving my brush like this hand is steady i'm more moving the other hand and you can see we can still apply the product so by doing two things uh, two things we are getting a uh, quicker results because you are almost double speech then with the product application yeah that's what i wanted to show you okay move this product a bit closer to the cuticle i started too low and this is when the things goes wrong always um when I change my routine. So when I've got this routine work it out and I kind of try to stick to it because then I get a better results. And now I'm taking too long time. Look what is happening with the gel. It starts to run on the sides. And if I don't hurry up, I'm going to make a mess out of the snow. Change. <laughs> 
Okay, so nice and thin layer, nice and thin layer. And now we are going to build up the apex again. So one side, other side, one side, other side, one side, other side. And with this one, I'm not going to make a mess because I'm just into my routine. Perfect, change your hands. Now, final check just before we cure it. So this is enough product, enough product, enough product. I am happy everywhere, maybe not in here. So with this final check, I'm always checking if there is any other place I would like to touch up. Change. Do exactly the same final check on this hand. It will save you a filing as well. Usually we don't have to do a final check on the shorter nails because shorter nails, as I say, they are much easier. They are much quicker. So I'm just closing all my products and then once the other hand is cured, we can shape it, it's nice. And then move on into the decoration of the snails. Perfect, change. So remove the inhibition layer. And we're shaping exactly the same way like we were shaping the tips. Okay, so a V-shape. You can see my filing lines and how the shape is changing. It's much nicer already. Much nicer. Touch the free edge, nice and straight. Coughing likes those, those straight shapes. Remove fluffy bits and pieces. And to be honest, it is almost perfect. But we need to blend around the cuticle area. So blend that out so that the nails are not going to lift it. If there is everything which is blended and there is no place to catch, they are never, they are not going to lift it. And then just smooth out all over a little bit, especially at the free edge. I'm just going to repeat exactly the same movement on all their nails. And I constantly check the shapes on the other needles as well, like compare them. I want to make sure everything is matching. I'm actually excited <laughs> now, getting to the most fun part. Okay, and another one. So you can see there are still some places which I even didn't touch it. If there is no need, we don't have to. That's a nail which went out of my routine, so I might have to file it a bit more. And you really want
want to think of the each place you file like just to get this nice shape my suggestion and that's the best suggestion i could give you is try to imagine this perfect shape and if you can imagine this perfect shape in your head then you kind of know what you want to achieve and you are going to achieve but if you cannot imagine this shape you, you don't know what you are going to do and then it's just not going to work to be honest so this is a really good tip for you guys okay i'm just touching up this one and that's them all filed now so i'm just going to quickly buff them okay so now we are just going to buff them on the other hand so I'm constantly protecting my clients cuticles and a skin around it I really like using the buffer for my shaping just because it's changed a lot like it's, it's smoothing out all the bits and pieces where there is a bumps and making the nails really much more beautiful and it has also larger surface than the file so I really love using the buffer and by buffer it's a kind of file it's still file so it files the nails it's not like i'm smoothing buffer or a buffer which uh, buffs to the high shine because then the gel wouldn't stick in so it's a rough buffer okay then final check if there is any other places i want to touch up check the client view making sure they're good and now I could blend it more around the cuticle area you want to do those checks in case like if we have missed something and also seeing the nails from a different point of view uh, will give you a better idea of the shape as well so and this is a really good tip guys for you and now we are going to use the cuticle bead just to tidy up the cuticles because I've got quite a lot actually it's a nail fold to be precise and I'm preparing actually Oliva is preparing a really nice uh, nail anatomy tutorial for you um, so because the cuticles we have already removed from the nail plate and now I'm just tidy up the nail fold one side I'm not going to overdo it but we need to sort them out a little bit so they look better <laughs> Ideally, to do a really nice critical work, I would need separate appointment like and do just the critical work, then it would be much, much nicer results. Okay, so I'm just filing one side and then put my bit into the reverse and going to file the other side just to get a nicer, nicer shape. Okay, so a bit more on the other side. And then that's our nail folds ready. Okay, so they all buffed cuticle down, and now we can move on into the decoration of the nail. So I'm just removing uh, all the dust and double check how the cuticles are work looking. So my always final touches on the cuticle area is just before painting. Like I might have some maybe small bits and pieces. But I don't want to overdo it just because the cuticles have lots of like a wee nicks and dry parts. So okay. 
and then ideally to get them perfect I should go with the e-file over them again like they would look much much nicer Okay, just before we start painting, I'm always pushing back the cuticles again, just in case if there was any movement of the cuticle. So just push them back again. And now we can start decorating those beautiful set. Clean the nails. And we are going to do some red and white Christmassy design. Very popular this year. So, on this finger, I'm going to go for a chrome. And I just need to grab some black. some black on the black the chrome looks um, more intense actually or could we could do it on the red let's try it on the red I never done it on the red <laughs> <laughs> okay. so again make sure you come the free edge nice and close to the cuticle Yeah, I'm really curious how it will look. This one will go white, then this one is going to be red. Again, nice and close to the cuticle. Cut the free edge. Then go to white. it you okay for the nails which are slightly different on each yeah, hand definitely. I should check before sorry <laughs> <laughs> I mean they still going to be the same but slightly different. slightly different kind of like matching I've got full concentration again like obviously when I'm doing a recording it means I've got limited time for the clients because setting up the camera plus talking make the nails 
uh, change, uh, make the application and uh, actually all the sets to take longer time. And I've got guys question just so I know what to do for the next year or when it is going to be a really busy. I mean, obviously before Christmas, we've got the Christmas rush and I can, when the camera is just set up and I don't have to concentrate on what I'm talking to you guys, it's not a big deal for me. I can kind of uh, do the tutorials as well. If you want to only watch it and maybe have some music in the background then i could record it even more on just on the christmas week let me know down in the comments below because it's pretty important one for me um if i wouldn't give us the toilet instruction but you would just more kind of watch it and relax it Chinch. yes i didn't paint it this one because i'm not painting the ones where we're putting the sugar over it Oh, here we will go. We need to go. I need to go sugar here, then chrome here, and then the design there. Perfect. So I didn't paint it two coats, the colors where I'm putting something over it, change, because there's no point. Uh, of putting the color over it now high shine no wipe top gel goes on top of this red because we are going to apply the chrome pigment in there and i'm really curious actually how this is going to take over red because i have the only done it on top of the black and then top coat going on on this one so we will do some design in here. Then some gems in this, so we keep it plain. And then the sugar here. I have not enough fingers, I think I'm... <laughs> with all these different ideas. To the side a little bit perfect other side a little bit fantastic thank you so i'm just sprinkle this needle on top of the top coat awesome change then this one This one is going to be chrome. For chrome, you have to be really good with the application. Another sugar nail. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Look what a great models I've got. <laughs> <laughs> Change. Awesome. So we are going to apply this chrome and I'm super excited for it now. So that's the chrome I'm using. I am really super excited. Clean my finger with the blue scrub.
then just rub this chrome in. Scratch it, scratch it, remove the excess, and then apply the design. So top coat first. We are going to do exactly the same on this one. Scratch it, scratch it, scratch it. Apply the top coat. Perfect change. Okay, it's so a time for some design. So I've got the paint on French gel and my D liner brush. And we are going to decorate those nails with the design. So on this one, I'm going to paint some bow. Okay, so nice line. Second line. Change. Then we've got the same bow on this one. Really nice and elegant set. Oh no. When things like that happen, it's better to wipe it off. So I'm quickly just wiping it off. Touch it up. Change. <laughs> The snowy look is really looking almost like all always awesome for a Christmassy set of the nails and I love it. And I think especially with the connection with the chrome, that looks so nice. Sprinkle it. 
gente. Okay, nice straight line. Now we are going to paint those uh, cute bow. So they are going to join all in the one place where the cross is. Change. Now I'm going to clean my brush because I want to have more control over it, my brush. Like at the minute I don't have as much control because there's too much product on it. <clears throat> and I'm going to paint additional... So in between that, so it's like a double bow. Change. Okay, but the second one has to be more firm and pretty. Patrick is actually good at wrapping the Christmas present. He's, he does all of them. <laughs> awesome change. Here another sugary design. And again, I should take it off because I don't it a little bit wrong. So this is going to be a snowflake. And I started with two straight lines, so I have changed the shape of the cross just to get a better six arms.
Okay, now just painting all those arms. Slightly smaller ones on the top. And what I love with the snowflakes is you can do so many different types of the snowflakes. Whatever comes to your mind. Sprinkle it. Change. Okay, another snowflakes on this one. And on this one for a change, I'm going to do a couple of the dots. And a couple dots on this one. And then sprinkle it. On this one we are going to put a beautiful diamond. So I just pick up my Swarovski crystals box and the drop of the base gel. Okay, so drop of the base gel. So you can see guys so simple things like a tiny wee gem exchange the design so much. Change. Okay, this hand is ready. We just have to apply the top coat. And then on this one, I'm going to quickly paint a candy cane. So this is my needle. Okay. 
it has to be almost like a wee triangle shape with a very thin end And this is a harder type of the candy cane, but I think it will look absolutely amazing once it's finished. So you can see it guys i'm kind of twisting my client hand wherever way i need it And for this design, you want to start at the thickest part and then drag your brush thinner and thinner. Then once we have finished it, it has to be sugary effect as well on it. So sugar it. Tap, tap, change. Okay, this hand is finished, so I quickly show you the final results. I'm taking the brush, removing the excess. Removing the excess. Scratch the surface here. And apply the cuticle oil so we have to clean it everything really well just so it looks nice I'm even going to use a drop of the blue scrap for this parts just so I can clean the chrome and you can see it I have reached uh, I have got the chrome over the white so what I'm doing is I'm cleaning it really well with the blue scrap and that also proves you that the sugar doesn't come off okay so even if it gets stains, we just take a nail polish remover, nail dehydrator or something like this to clean it up. Okay. I take the other hand. Now on this hand, I'm just going to quickly apply the top coat here. Again, clean this sugar, cook it, and then I can uh, just apply the cuticle oil and take a final picture for you. So I hope guys you have really enjoyed watching this tutorial. Actually clean this one as well. So cleaning any glitter chrome which 
I've got all over the place. <laughs> okay, so just show you that even from the sugar, things will come off and we don't have to worry about it. So cuticle oil and just so it looks nice and prettier. And then we can take a beautiful thumbnail picture. I just show you quickly this one as well. Yeah, guys, I hope you have really enjoyed watching this tutorial on glittery hacks. And bye for now.